Jeff Durkin's We Are Change CT out here in New York City. We just wrapped up an amazing screening of the film about Aaron Schwartz, the internet's own boy. We're here with the director who happened to do a Q&A here, uh, Brian Knappenberger. Brian, thanks for the interview. First, tell us about the film and basically what got you involved in Aaron's story um, related from your first film, We Are Legion, about Anonymous, and also what transitioned to do a film about Aaron's story and his life about what he did. Yeah, I was I was um, on a panel talking about my previous film, We Are Legion, the story of the hacktivists, um, here in New York, and uh, on the panel with me was Quinn Norton, who's Aaron's ex-girlfriend, and and uh, that we were at this event that happened about a week after Aaron died, and so everybody was um, really it was a very emotional kind of time, and um, you know everybody had a story about Aaron, everybody seemed to know him. Uh, there was this kind of wave of anger and frustration and sympathy kind of coming through the internet. And so I just started filming right away. I, didn't, I wasn't sure if I was going to really be making a film yet. Um, but I just started filming and trying to understand why so many people were, this story was resonating uh, with so many people, including people that didn't know him. So I started doing interviews. And then um, two or three months later, I realized like that his story needed to be told. I mean, he's such a kind of it's a remarkable, uh, complex, not perfect, but a complex, remarkable individual, um, inspiring to people in, in who he was and infuriating into what happened to him and how uh, and what our government can do to a prescient thinker. And also you touched upon it with several different stories also about other whistleblowers and other hacktivists where it seems with Aaron's case and also other cases, Barrett Brown, Jeremy Hammonds, Chelsea Manning, among other whistleblowers, the government's position on whistleblowers and people who mainly just for the sake of transparency expose wrongdoing and also rely more on public information for more people to access that um, because as such as a threat to the establishment. With this case, it's so interesting because I only heard about it recently with Aaron's case about a year or so ago, year and a half ago. What was different with Aaron's story compared to the other cases that we've t um, that, that were mentioned in the film and also what's happening lately? Well, I don't think, look, I think there are, there are lots of small things that are different, but in the big picture, they're not that much different. Um, if you look at somebody like uh, Chelsea Manning, or if you look at like some, somebody like Edward Snowden, what they're doing is they're, t they're teaching us about our world. They're teaching us about our government and our relationship with our government, or at least the way our government is interpreting its relationship with its citizens. Um, and this is something we should know in order to be a democracy participatory democracy because we presumably determine how to govern ourselves how do we do that unless we unless there's transparency and um, the case of Chelsea Manning I mean you know we just got so little information about the Iraq war and what why we went to war and what was happening uh, and the sort of uh, main avenues for that information all seemed to kind of fall into lockstep and and we weren't getting the real story um, and and so uh, that's something you know. It's brave for somebody, for a soldier, to uh, see something uh, be affected by um, be, be morally and, and uh, outraged by what they see, and to take risks to really risk coming forward. That's what Chelsea Manning did. That's what Edward Snowden did. Um, Edward Snowden. I mean, there's, there just hasn't been uh, revelations on that level about what are what's happened post 9/11. They're just, I mean, it's just this enormous, tro this, this rock solid kind of foundation about what is happening with all of these documents to back it up. Um, this is something we need to know. So um, whether that's the relationship with our government or, I mean, Aaron uh, um, was fighting for all the same causes. Um, but I think what Aaron's, Aaron's particular insight seemed to be that when you keep knowledge, academic knowledge, research, science, um, away from people, when you, when you only give access to, to, re uh, to research uh, or transparency in, in our, or th uh, the way our government works, when you only give access to those with money, then what you're doing essentially is you're kind of cementing this stratified class structure. You're saying to people that are already struggling, that are already having problems participating, that you can't even know how the world works. You can't even know how your government works. Secrecy protects those who are already in power, right? Secrecy, the, um, 
uh, hiding and this overclassification protects the status quo. And we live in this era of secrecy in which uh, there are real um, crimes being committed, in which there are things that are, our government is doing things that are clearly unconstitutional. This isn't a coincidence that there is a huge secrecy and overclassification and real crimes being committed at the same time. So what do you do in that situation? I mean, some people have the moral um, kind of wherewithal uh, and the courage to stand up and, and, and let the rest of us know what they know. And I think that's, I think that's what, I think that's where there's crossover. I was charged under the Espionage Act. I was turned into an enemy of the state. That was bad enough. At least I still had access to the court of law to a due process. I had rights. And as much as the government didn't like that. That's why I personally, the Center for Constitutional Rights, and other people who understand what's going on uh, support uh, truth tellers like Jeremy Hammond, uh, Bradley Manning, Aaron Swartz, and Julian Assange.